Greetings and Chatelet everyone. This is going to be video number two on the new Leica Sealux. And a long time ago there was a Sealux 1, 2, 3, whatever. This is just plain old Sealux. And there's a, the reason for video number two. I'm going to go into some things I didn't go into in video number one. And once again, uh, on the bottom we see it says type 1546 but it's not the TYP that they had on the on the uh, previous cameras so I don't know what's going on there but anyway uh, I'm gonna get to this stuff maybe do a small comparison between uh, this and uh, this little like a C right here and a huge difference in size between these two uh, let's see if we can see that here you don't see it so much here but this uh, Sealux is at least double the weight of this little tiny like a C. A little tiny like a C has a 1 over 1.7 inch sensor. This like a Sealux has the 1 inch sensor. And let's just get right into this stuff here. Uh, a lot to talk about. Uh, first of all, the thing I want to talk about was like a value. Uh, and one of the principles uh, of like a value for me is. Uh, I recently bought a uh, Canon M100 camera, which has an APS-C sensor. It's a mirrorless, uh, interchangeable lens. I got the 15-45 lens, which gives you an effective range of 24 to 72, 3x zoom. This particular camera here, the c is 360 effective, uh, 135 equivalent zoom, so five times what the uh, Canon is. The importance of the five times is since pictures are two-dimensional, it's five times this way and five times that way. You're talking 25 times. So in other words, if I, if the thing that I want to capture with this at full zoom, with the C-Lux at full zoom, fills the, the frame, then it's only going to occupy 1 25th of the frame in the um, M100, the uh, APS-C camera. And so even though the sensor is three times bigger, uh, the image is 25 times smaller. So, you know, the, the fact that you've got a bigger sensor isn't helping you because you've still got a, a, like a 10 to 1 disadvantage there. So you got to have the long lens. The 10 to long lens on the uh, Canon is going to be a, a very, very hefty. And this thing right here will fit in a shirt pocket. Probably a little heavy for a shirt pocket, but it will fit in a shirt pocket. Now, the problem here is I got the Canon with the lens for $500, retail $600, got it for $5. Uh, Fuji has a new one out that's similar. It's going to be $500, or maybe it's not similar, but they did have one that was $600 to, with one of those kit lenses. And uh, But Leica's uh, comparison, closest comparison, is the CL, and the CL with their um, kit lens is forty two hundred dollars so seven times the seven times the retail of the canon eight and a half times the actual purchase price so uh comparing uh my canon to a leica cl which i was looking at uh paying eight times as much for leica is not a good deal it's just not a good deal that camera i don't know why anybody would bother to make it but it's just not a good deal now paying two or three times for a Leica, yeah, for a real Leica, yeah. With this, uh, because this is made by Panasonic, this uh, C-Lux, you don't pay two or three times, you pay one and a quarter times, you pay 1050 instead of 800. So, uh, really good deal for, for a Leica. But uh, eight times, it's just outrageous, it's ridiculous. So, uh, so Leica CL for 4200 with a kit lens, I don't, can't imagine who's buying that thing. It just is... Uh, Way, way overpriced. Of course, it has advanced features and has a view, electronic viewfinder and blah, 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 blah. So what? You know, it... Uh... So let's see. Uh, one other thing that I had here uh, was why well, buy the C-Lux instead of the Panasonic equivalent ZS200. Uh, for one, the price differential isn't that great for me. You get a nicer finish, uh, better warranty, and uh, I, I just think it's a much nicer looking, feeling camera. And uh, other than that, it's about the only difference. Well, the ZS200 supposedly has a backside illuminated sensor where 
this one apparently does not, but yeah, I don't know if you can trust those specs or not. But um, anyway, the other thing about the uh, Leicas, of course, you can use these on Panasonics too, are these uh, nice carry cases. Uh, and they're provided by Leica, not Panasonic, at a price. That's these clamshell cases. You can just, you know, pop the camera in there. See a little bit better on the uh, Leica C. Little tiny uh, clamshell case here. If I can get that into the view here. Herbs. And the uh, and magnetic closure there. And with a nice, uh, you know, a shoulder strap like so. The point being that uh, if you're going to some place like a wedding, wedding or a funeral and you didn't want to look like the photographer that wasn't invited to be the photographer, these kind of carry cases are ideal. If you uh, take your camera in, you don't look like a photographer that way. So they're very, very, very handy cases and they do cost money. Okay, the next thing, the next item on here, uh, irritations with the Leica C-Lux, the new Leica C-Lux. One of the biggest problems I have here is I like to go to view a lot after the screen has gone quiet and it doesn't work the way that it does on the Leica C. So part of the problem is, you see we have this on and off switch here. And what happens is when the on and off switch is on or off, either one, and the thing uh, shuts off the screen, pushing the view button here playback button doesn't work um, when when it's off or if it goes into sleep mode or something like that it just doesn't work I've tried every combination of buttons on here nothing seems to work now with a with a like a C of course being totally electronic and just on and off with a you know a, what they call a little solenoid sensor or whatever you can push the uh, review button and I uh, uh, probably don't have any photos on here. No, no valid picture to play. But anyway, you get the idea. It, uh, you can go to playback at any time without having to have the lens extended. But with this camera, since the lens always extends when the camera comes on, and I like to have it extend to the last zoom setting that I had, which a lot of times is full zoom, uh, it, uh, just trying to get that into playback mode when it's on sleep mode, Oh, the lens has to come all the way out. It takes like 15 seconds or whatever. It takes a long time, so it's a real pain in the butt. So that's one uh, irritation is the no on to view. And another problem with this, it's I guess a problem with a lot of cameras, not just this one, is that uh, for some reason the aperture tends to drift a lot when I'm shooting. And what I mean by that is when the camera is on, if we look at the uh, aperture here, Let's say we're at uh, minimum zoom, okay, and the aperture is f3.3. We can see it on there at the very left in yellow. And that's what this lens is set up to do, 3.3 uh, at uh, minimum zoom and 6.4 at maximum zoom. But let's say I zoom to, I won't be able to replicate this here, but if I zoom up to f6.3 here, a lot of times what will happen is some operations get done here, uh, during shooting and then when I get it back to ma minimum zoom it's staying on 6.3 or some such value and not going back to f3.3 and then if you don't catch it in time and you're in a hurry to get a shot off and everything else you're shooting at a much higher aperture which means slower shutter speed and in the low light uh, it doesn't work out so well so um so I, I really don't like that aperture drift, uh, the way that that works on a lot of these cameras, and I wish somebody had some programming to uh, to fix that so that it so that it never changed. So that when I go back to minimum zoom, it's never different from f3.3 unless I set it that way, unless I want it to be that way. And they can argue all they want to about the changes that I'm making while shooting or I want to, but that's not really true. So I, I wish somebody would fix that. Uh, I already described the sensor size versus zoom issue, the 25 times issue, that, uh, you know, um, just because you have a, a larger sensor doesn't mean you're going to get a better picture. 
unless uh, unless you have an equivalent lens and uh, it's going to be extremely heavy on those uh, big sensor cameras if you're going to get a really long zoom. Heck, I have a pocket camera uses a 1 over 2.3 uh, inch sensor and it's uh, got a 960 millimeter zoom and it's smaller than this uh, like a C-Lux here. It's the uh, Canon SX720 and 730. And uh, the quality of the long end of zoom is actually pretty darn good. I've done zoom samples and put them online, so uh, it's, uh, it's actually very good, the optical quality. And let's see, next item is low ISO. Uh, I've done tests here that I posted online comparing uh, ISO 125 and ISO 200 on the same scene on this camera, the C-Lux, and 125 was obviously lower in noise, obvious. And uh, so I shoot, I try to shoot mostly at ISO 125, but I was surprised at the amount of difference between 125 and 200. Of course, it's gonna vary according to the subject. You know, you're, the more contrast you have, the better light you have, the less you'll probably notice the noise. Uh, so, one other feature on this camera that's really, really great. I might even be able to show this on the menu here. If uh, I can get the menu up here. Yeah, here we go. Right down. Oh, here it is. Highlight shadow. Now, I'm set to zero and zero here. If I scroll down a little bit, I can get it to... Oops. There it is. Shadow plus five, highlight minus five. Well, anywhere from zero to five uh, works on either one of these, but the uh, point of it is, is that compared to HDR, I've had, uh, I've had a lot of times I've gotten better results with this than uh, with HDR. Now, in, in some uh, low light, low contrast, uh, you just get uh, a much worse photo that way. Uh, more smearing, more noise due to the JPEG engine. But uh, I, uh, for me, and where I have really bright scenes and things like that, I do better with that uh, than with anything like HDR, which is always kind of clumsy with these small cameras. And let's see. Uh, why I use the screen instead of the viewfinder? Because I'm nearsighted and I can see the screen a lot better and I don't have to put my eye up to here with glasses on and yeah, it's just easier to use a screen. If you're not nearsighted, then this has a great viewfinder on it. So there you go. It's got a good diopter adjustment. So, uh, but I, and I, and when it comes to the touch features, it is a touch screen. I've just turned it off. I found that uh, sometimes the cursor would move around uh, the focus cursor when I didn't want it to, and I didn't want to fight with it and try to be have my attention focused on that. So I just turned the dang thing off. I don't miss it. I get what I I've done what I need without that uh, touch screen. So uh, my photos are online on uh, DaleThorn.com. You can just look it up uh, under photos and like a C-Lux. I've got one page so far and I'll have more. And uh, the next item that I would seriously consider purchasing uh, is a very very strange combination that uh, that would be the uh, probably the Leica M7 which is a film camera and uh, 75 millimeter Noctilux that's a new Noctilux uh, f1.25 and I had the uh, f0.95 with a monochrome but uh, I think that 75 millimeter Nocti with the uh, M7 film camera would be a heck of a combination I'd probably shoot black and white but there we go. That's review number two for the Lego Sea Lux. Thank you very much.